what's up everybody and welcome back to this channel today i'll be talking about 35 millimeter double exposures okay so a couple weeks ago it occurred to me that i hadn't shot double exposures on my 35 millimeter cameras yet and i was like what am i waiting for i might as well give it a shot i of course went to the world wide web did a little research basically found out that there were two good ways of doing double exposure on 35 millimeter cameras way number one most 35 millimeter cameras comes with a rewind kind of button kind of situation so on my om system it has a button on top on my om4 and on my om1 it has a little latch on the front of it that you just push down it has an r for rewind and what you want to do is you want to hold down the rewind um button and advance your film lever i think i have to throw an example so here is my om1 isn't she lovely here is the r that i spoke of switch it down it's down Advance is here. Advance is once. Boom. Bring it back. Oh, does it automatically. See that? Went back up. Now I take another photo. Pow. Still on the same frame. That's how to do double exposures in camera. All right? Most cameras have something very similar to this. You don't have to do too much extra to make a double exposure on a 35 millimeter camera which is great it's actually kind of easy especially considering what i did instead easy who does easy around here i chose option number two option number two was a bit trickier challenging a bit of a pain in the ass at times but i powered through anyway and here's how option number two works say you have a camera that will not allow you to recock the shutter without advancing the film That's that right? you have that kind of camera how can you make double exposures what you want to do is you want to go through your entire roll and just shoot your first round of photos. Then when you go to rewind this film, you want to be very careful as you bring it back around and you rewind it to make sure that you don't get your leader stuck back in the canister. That part is very important. Also kind of tricky. You have to have an idea of how many cranks you can do before you get to the end of your leader. So on day one of my double exposure journey, I headed out to Venice Beach with my friend Josh. Um, I knew I wanted to shoot it in black and white because everything I read said that double exposures on black and white was much easier than doing it on color. Not a problem, I shot some Ilford XP2 400 because I had recently mixed some C41. We did a number of different kind of um, bodybuilder, men's physique kind of positions. Lo and behold, he used to compete. So that was great. What I will say that's important about doing this type of double exposure is that you need to have a notebook with you in order to take notes. So if you're shooting the shots horizontally, write down a horizontal shot. I at least did this much. What I should have done in hindsight is that I should have also wrote how close I was to my subject. This would have really helped me out when going back to shoot my second round of photos using the same film so that I'd have a better composition uh, of the overlay on top of my first image. But you live, you learn, first time for everything. Now I know, I can share it with you guys. The following weekend, I went downtown and met with some friends from Analog Walkers. Uh, you can find them here if you check out this video vlog I did with them a couple weeks ago. And yeah, we got together, walked around downtown LA, and just did some street photography. Had it in my head that I would overlay my initial images of Josh with images of buildings. My idea was like, the male form meets man-made structures. I think I needed more time to think this out. One, I forgot my notebook that I had written down all the different images I had taken of Josh in. I knew some of the Im images would be vertical on horizontal or vice versa, and I just had to deal with that. I could always go in and crop. About midway through this walk, I was like, you know what? I should probably be looking for things that are textured because if I already have Josh's form to overlay it with something textured, it would probably look pretty cool. So here and there, I started to focus on finding objects, things that were textured that might be interesting to overlay with Josh's form. Parting advice. If you're going to do double exposures, if your camera has the feature to do the whole, you know, film advance but not really advancing it thing, do that. Second advice, if you're going to do it this way, which is not a bad way of doing it, say you go ahead and do some portraitures and you know you're going on this epic hike and you want to get some really nice naturey stuff overlaying your 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 model then great you know definitely do it this way take detailed notes and 
go forth and prosper. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have tried this method of doing double exposures, let me know how you fared. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you haven't yet, subscribe to this channel because you know what? I'll be back next week with another one. I will see you guys then. Peace.